Hey guys. So I got a comment via Kindle Unlimited the other day and uh, a reader of my first book, the first book in my Rudy and Raven series, she wrote, you made me cry. I refuse to read any more of your books. You suck, dude. When's the next one? Look, this story is about real life, okay? It's about real people going through real things. There are no vampires, no werewolves, no impossible and unrealistic situations. But it does have some romance, it has some arguments, and it has jokes. And it's about you and the things that you go through. It's about life. It's sometimes funny, it's sometimes sad, and sometimes tragic. And it's filled with interesting, colorful people, laughter, tough situations. Mostly, I think, it's about peeling back your life to discover who you are, not as the world sees you, but as you were meant to be. Raven, yo, she's an interesting one. I don't know how old she is, she just kind of pretty much wrote herself, so you're gonna have to decide that one for yourself, okay? Um, but she's, she's fiery and impetuous, and she's a spontaneous one, and her brother often accuses her of getting him into trouble, and it wouldn't be wrong. Raven loves life, she loves experiences, but she doesn't always think her way through a thing before she jumps into it. She also has a huge bone to pick with life, and that bone is her father. She's brought this bone with her as Raven and her brother have now arrived to spend a little bit of time with her, with her grandfather, and Raven feels like she's got a point to prove to her father and to everyone. She doesn't really realize that the biggest point that she has to prove is to herself. Raven's a toughie. She doesn't want to be seen as a typical girl. But like many girls, her age she is a bit of a romantic at heart, but she's never going to admit that to anyone. Okay, let's talk about Rudy. Rudy, yeah. Oh, Rudy's an interesting guy. He's the, he's the more reserved of the two. Uh, he doesn't like to get into any trouble or put himself out there, but I mean, who does, right? He sees through a lot of Raven's mischief, and he tries his level best to stay out of it, but he just can't help himself. He, he gets drawn into her little schemes and uh, again and again and again. Now, he comes across as confident and outgoing on the surface, and that's what people see. But inside, Rudy's like a, he's like a bundle of nerves. He doubts himself a lot. Uh, he doesn't think he can do it uh, or get there, and, and that causes him a, a, a lot of strife for him. I love Rudy, man. I really, really do. He's, he's so much stronger and more capable than he gives himself credit for. Okay, so here's an extract from The Organ Grinders Monkey, book one of my Rudy and Raven series. It's on ebook, as you can see, ebook because the bookstores are closed at the moment, and that's a story for another day, so we're not even going to get into that. So, all right, so here we go. Chapter four, how to make an angry unicorn. Rudy, he spun in the air, flashing out to connect with the chin of the soldier behind him. He nodded a thank you to his teammate, rolled over his left shoulder, and tripped the next man coming his way. A fist came barreling down at him. He slipped to the left, Punched. One, two. The enemy combat doubling over as his body armor gave way under the enormous pressure of Rudy's bionic gloves. Wake up! A grenade flew over his head, landing a short distance away. Hyperfluid pumped into the legs of his exoskeleton, giving him the extra power he needed to spring clear. Rolling in the air as the concussion struck him. He landed hard, his shoulder jarring as he hit the ground. More grenades landing in the dust. He shook as surge after surge of blast waves struck rolling him left and right. His arms covered his head, protecting himself from the blast, his suit doing the rest of the job. Rudy, 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 Rudy. What? What? He mumbled as the scene changed to Raven's laughing face, her hands on his shoulders as she rocked him back and forth. Wake up, sleepyhead, there's things to do. Rudy, Rudy groaned, pushing her away. The last remnants of his dream fading, he sat up and rubbed his eyes. What time is it? He mumbled again. Late, said Raven. She hopped onto his bed and snuggled down under the covers. I let you sleep. Another girl helped me this morning. She's nice. Maybe I'll hang out with her, seeing as you can't move around much. You went to Auntie Jean's? What time is it? Rudy fumbled for his phone on the bedside table. 10 a.m. You were sleeping. Between the pain meds and your busted up leg, I thought I would go without you. 
Well, I'm up now, said Rudy. What do you want? Attitude, attitude, Raven laughed. Can you walk? Of course I can walk. Just some stitches. I don't need a wheelchair. Raven bounded out from under the covers, came around the bed and grasped Rudy's shoulders again. Great, I'll make coffee and you get washed and dressed. Meet you in the kitchen. We have stuff to do. I'm not allowed to have coffee, Rudy started. Raven put up a hand to shush him. Shush, coffee is brain food. It's high time you started. Now get going. Rudy shook his head and plopped back into his pillows as Raven bounced out of the room. This, thought Rudy, is what Raven's big ideas always look like. At least, he had to acknowledge, it was miles better than her brooding of the night before.